Hey, boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can use the associative property to help us group different factors to help us um, group the different side lengths of a rectangle to uh, model the area. So our learning goal for today says I can use the associative property to group side lengths in different ways to find the area. We're also going to throw in a little bit of the commutative property in this um, lesson as well. So remember, just a quick review, the associative property is where you can move the parentheses around in your multiplication problem. And the commutative property is the flip-flop, where you can flip-flop those factors in a problem. So the materials that you'll need for today are a dry erase board. Pretty easy. That's all you'll need. So make sure you grab those before you get started. All right, friends, so we're going to start with our application problem. It says the banquet table in a restaurant measures three feet by six feet. For a large party, workers at the restaurant place two banquet tables side by side to create one long table. Find the area of the new longer table. So you're going to pause the video. You're going to find the area of when you're making that longer table. So this is just like the previous lessons where you have one um, table that's three feet by six feet for the side lengths and you're putting two of them together to find the total area of the new longer table. So pause the video, go ahead and draw a quick diagram or picture if that'll help you. I know that's what I'm going to do when I model the problem for you because that's just the way that my mind works. I just want to show how I'm solving it and then um, solve the problem using your multiplication equations for area and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. I'm sure you do, that was pretty quick. But otherwise, here's how I solved it. So again, I started with a picture. So here's my first rectangle of three feet by six feet. And then I know that they put a second one right there with it. And those side lengths are the same of three and six. So I can solve this two different ways. That's kind of how I wanted to think about it in my mind. So I did three times 12 because the side lengths on each end are three feet. And across the top, it's really 12 feet in total because you have your six feet plus your other six foot table. So I could model that by saying six times six plus, I'm sorry, three times six plus three times six. So I could just add the product of both of the rectangles. So that would be 18 plus 18, which would equal 36. Or another way that I could solve this, knowing that it's 3 times 12, I could use the distributive property to take my 12 and break it apart into 10 and 2. Remember that one factor has to stay the same, so that's why you see 3 in all of those. To me, this is the easier strategy with just being able to add the numbers. So 3 times 10 is 30, and 3 times 2 is 6, and 30 plus 6 is 36. To me, it's easier to add that than it is to add 18 plus 18. But whichever strategy you choose is fine too. So the total area of the two banquet tables is 36 square feet. Remember, square feet because we're measuring the area. Okay, so think about that. We're going to use that with our lesson for today. So really like this rectangle is 3 feet by 12 feet. So we're going to write an equation or expression to show how to find the area of a rectangle with side lengths of 3 and 12. So think about just like how we did with the um, application problem. I want you to write an expression to show how you would find the area of a rectangle with this. So pause the video, then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. 3 times 12. Pretty simple, right? We just did that. So the area of this rectangle is what? 36 square units, just like we solved in the last problem, okay? So if I have three times 12, and then I write three times two times six, why are these expressions equal? So look closely at those. Why are they equal? because 12 is just two times six. So all we did was break down that 12 into a multiplication problem. So write this expression on your board with the parentheses in a different place. So this is that associative property. We're just taking our two times six parentheses or parentheses around two times six, and you're shifting it over to the other part of the problem. 
So go ahead and pause the video, rewrite them with a different same order. You have to write three times two times six, but shift your parentheses over and then click play when you're ready to go over it. All right, friends, so here's what I came up with. Three times two times six. Okay, notice how my voice changes when I say that. Three times two times six. I pause in between there because that's telling you that you have to solve what's in those parentheses first. So solve three times two now and write the new expression on your board. So you have to solve that first part and then multiply by what's left over. So pause the video, solve three times two, and then what would your new expression be? And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. I know that three times two is six, so then I would be left with six times six. And here's what a rectangle could look like with those side lengths, okay? So we talked about in the last one, we had a three by 12 rectangle. Now we have a six by six. Interesting. All right, so now we're gonna use the commutative property and switch the order of the factors in the parentheses. So we have three times two. Now you're gonna flip-flop those and write the new equation. Okay, so pause, do that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Okay, so you just flip-flop it. Now it's two times three times six. Okay, that's the commutative property. Will you be able to find new side lengths by moving the parentheses in this new expression? So if I were to switch and take the parentheses around the three times six this time, are my side lengths going to change instead of being six by six, will they be different? So think about that for a second. All right, friends. So then I would, if I were to flip those parentheses or move those parentheses, I would change because now I would have a side length of what? I had two by 18 because I have one side as two and then three times six equals 18. Oh, craziness. These are all still with an area of 36. They're just different ways to show it. All right, so here, let's go back to three times 12. So now, are these, why are these expressions equal? Yeah, because 12 is just three times four. So I just found a new multiplication for 12. Okay, so write this equation on your board with the parentheses in a different place. So just like we did before, shift those parentheses to the other two factors. All right, so what'd you guys come up with? It should be three times three times four. Okay, so solve three times three and write the new expression on your board. Okay, so three times three is nine, so nine times four would be your new expression. And you could just draw a quick rectangle that would look like this to represent nine by four. If we use a commutative property and switch the order of the factors in the parentheses, will I find new side lengths by moving the parentheses? What do you think? Think about that for a second. That's a tricky one, right? So if I have my three times three and I switch those factors and then I move the parentheses to the other side, am I going to get a new rectangle with new side lengths? No, because those three times three, it's the same factors. So that's not going to change what your side lengths would be because they're the actual same factor. So three times three is always going to be the same as three times three, <laughs> no matter which three is first. All right, so do you think we found all the possible whole number side lengths for a rectangle with an area of 36? I don't know kind of tricky to think about it that way. So the way that I'm going to think about it is I'm going to go through from 1 to 10 to say, do I have a side length of 1 to 10? Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's the rectangles that we came up with. 
we have a 9 by 4, those are side lengths, 3 by 12, 2 by 18, and 6 by 6. So if I look at these, do I have a rectangle that has a side length of 1? Because that's the first number we're going to start with. No, I don't. Oh, goodness, that's the easiest one because I could do 1 times 36, right? Sometimes we forget about that one because it's the easiest. Okay, so let's go now to the next one. Do we have a rectangle with a side length of 2? Yeah, we sure do, right there. How about 3? Oh, right there. How about 4? No, there's the 4. How about 5? Oh, we don't have a 5. Hmm. Can I multiply a number by 5 to get to 36? Like 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 5, or 5 times 6 is 30, 5 times 7 is 35, 5 times 8 is 40. Oh, I can't do that, right? Because that's not going to give me 36 when I multiply a number by 5. Okay, hmm. all right, so let's write it here. All right, let's go to 6. Do we have a side length of 6 somewhere? Oh, right there, we sure do. All right, what about 7? Oh, I don't have a 7. Okay, let's write it down here. Okay, how about 8? Do I have an 8 of a side length? Oh, I sure don't. Okay, we'll write it there. What about 9? Do I have a rectangle with a side length of 9? Oh, there it is right there. Okay, how about 10? I don't, so let's write it here. What do you guys notice about these numbers in the bottom here? So we have 5, 7, 8, and 10. How, what do those numbers have to do with 36? Remember, we're multiplying the side lengths. Oh, some of you are saying, I don't know. Well, remember when we talked about 5? Five isn't a factor of 36. You can't multiply any number times five to get 36, any whole number. Same thing for seven, right? If we counted seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, oh, we can't get to 36 right there, right? And the same thing with eight and 10. So those cannot be side lengths of a rectangle with an area of 36 because they're not factors or units of 36. So interesting. So those rectangles that we have there are the only ways that you could make 36 with a rectangle with an area of 36. Oh, but also remember, you could flip-flop those side lengths, right? So instead of a 3 by 12, you could have a 12 by 3. So just keep that in mind. Okay, sweet. You guys did a great job using the associative property and the commutative property to group side lengths in different ways to find the area. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete, complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.